Hello everyone, uh, welcome for a new episode of Seller Talks and today we're going to talk about South Africa. Um, it's a new uh, show we're doing uh, because we're not featuring one particular guest. We have a main guest, but we're going to talk about one country and that's going to be South Africa. So uh, today is going to be all about South Africa and we have a special guest that uh, obviously uh, can tell us all about uh, this beautiful wine country. So while I'm inviting him to join us in the show, please, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the question mark box or in the chat. We try to keep up with the chat, but uh, the question mark box works best because that allows us to uh, always see the questions. And in the meanwhile, uh, what you're drinking. So I assume some people have a glass of wine and I'm curious about what wine you're drinking today. So um, for us, it's going to be uh, Chardonnay from obviously South Africa and from Glenelli and uh, from Starrenbosch. And we're going to learn more about uh, this particular wine from our main guest, Pardon. And Pardon will join us in a minute. And uh, Mio Cantina Delfino, yes, we're drinking wine. Um, so I assume you're drinking Italian wine uh, being... Italian all the way, but um, maybe you surprised us now and also opened up a South African bottle. But um, well, guys, feel free to uh, to share if you're uh, what you're drinking, and uh, pardon. Uh, well, let's uh, wait a minute for pardon to uh, arrive. Uh, Shiraz from South Africa. Very good, very good. At least one person is uh, on pardon, on par, <laughs> on pardon. Um, Chardonnay from Simpsons in England, New Chablis. Well. It's not the same, but I think it's a very interesting wine. So let's give it another try and see what Pardon is up to. By the way, for everybody who didn't uh, watch yet, we have a new giveaway announced. Uh, you can win a set of uh, Gabriel glasses. And the only thing you will have to do is uh, go to uh, the Instagram for Dutch Wine Apprentice and put your uh, name uh, under uh, the post. Uh, with two wine lovers and uh, share obviously to increase your chances but we're going to give away uh, on the 1st of April a set of six glasses and a huge uh, prize I would say because it's really beautiful universal glasses so pardon um, is uh, getting ready so let's give it a couple of minutes Sauvignon Blanc Warwick Aha. yes I see Pardon is, uh, is watching us, so let's see if he can also get into the show. Any more people drinking uh, Sauvignon Blanc or maybe Warwick as well? Today we're um, going a little bit uh, in a new territory for me because normally for me it's uh, German wine and Italian wine. But let's see what we can learn about South Africa. Pardon, you are in the chat, but now let's get you into the video. And in the meanwhile, if you have any questions you would like to share, ha, there he is. Pardon. In yours. How are you, my friend? Good, man. Good, man. How are you? I see you are uh, very much uh, on topic drinking coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I mean, it's good to get your tastes, your senses uh, go, going on there, uh, right? Yeah, it, it's always good to start with coffee any any time before wine. You could you, you could tell us all about that because amongst a lot of things you're a sommelier and a good one. So if you tell people that they should start with coffee and then drink wine, uh, I'm interesting what the uh, interested in what the what the reasoning is behind that. But <laughs> thank you for being in the show today. Um, because uh, I already explained that we're going to have uh, a little bit of a different show uh, as normal because normally we have one guest featuring and we will talk about his uh, only his life or company. Uh, today we're going to talk about your life and your career, but we're also going to talk about the country, a whole country today, uh, which is South Africa. And um, I invited you because first and foremost, uh, you're a cool guest. Because we only like cool people in the show. We don't uh, uh, like boring people here. So, yes, very good. 
And um, another reason is that you have a, 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 a quite a diverse professional career and spent quite some time in South Africa. So maybe we're going to start off with uh, an introduction from your side, so your background, and um, yeah, what you're doing at the moment. So uh, just a recap uh, for those who don't know you. Yeah, well, uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Pardon Tabuzu. Um, I'm actually... Uh, originally Zimbabwean, uh, but um, I actually spent most of my uh, lifetime in South Africa and also career time as well in South Africa. Uh, my, my my background my background is actually coming from uh, economics and uh, sports psychology, and, uh, but then everything changed when I went to South Africa. Uh, you know, uh, during uh, two thousand and six, two thousand and eight, uh, the economy was actually uh, crashing in Zimbabwe, so uh, everyone was actually moving uh, to the next, uh, the next biggest economy in uh, in the southern part of Africa or in Africa uh, to say. Uh, so I also joined uh, joined in uh, with, uh, uh, with Fred, who I had just uh, finished uh, finished uh, 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 my my graduation with. Um, so we just uh, picked uh, a couple of. Uh, a bunch of uh, a bunch of certificates, and they just go to South Africa, hoping to actually, you know, be uh, be in the same uh, industry that uh, we were uh, back in Zimbabwe. But so you you already had a a career, and you started your career in the wine industry, in the service industry, before you went to South Africa. No, 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 no. Um, I was actually in uh, in economics. So just uh, just after my my attachment uh, with Elizabeth Bengal Zimbabwe, then uh, I decided, okay. Things are crashing now, so I'm going yeah. to. So when I got to South Africa now, you know, um, I, I thought I, I could actually uh, get the opportunity to actually have practice the same uh, in the same industry which I was. Um, but uh, you know, it, it was not the the, the, the case. Um, but then eventually, I found my way uh, uh, working in um, uh, in one of the hotels, which. Uh, a little bit more like uh, one hour after uh, um, from Cape Town, which is uh, in Ribic Castile, very small, small uh, community, but uh, that's where most of the uh, fantastic wines are coming from, uh, from South Africa, especially uh, 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 Chenin Blancs and also Shiraz uh, lead blends as well. Uh, so. Um, when I was there, you know, so, I, so how did you how did you pick up the idea to start working with wine? Because, uh, like you explained, your background is not uh, typically uh, about wine. So, wh what was the switch? Well, well, well the, the, basically, the switch was, uh, you know, it, it, it was where um, where the opportunities were. Yeah. Uh, so it's a coincidence, maybe, that you ended up in the wine because this is where the opportunity was at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's absolutely a coincidence, but that's where the opportunity was at that time. Yeah. So I just took it and uh, I started off uh, working uh, at this hotel as uh, as a runner. Uh, yeah. uh, in, in, when I actually moved to uh, moved to South Africa at that time, it was actually in April. So they used to host uh, a festival which was called uh, the Olive Festival. So this is where you have uh, a, a lot of guests that are actually coming from from uh, from Europe, from the states. And they're also uh, coming to Rubica still, you know, to actually experience the festival, the culture, the food. So, the, 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 you know, you have about uh, 120,000 people in this small, small town. And yeah. I, I was employed as a, as a runner at that time. So <laughs> I remember myself, you know, struggling to actually run with, uh, with plates and uh, I, because I didn't know the systematic of the tables, you know, they, because they, they were... There was table number one, table number two. Yeah. And it was very confusing, you know. So, but uh, yeah, but but then I, I I got the grip of it, and um, after the the olive festival, at, at at some point, at some point, you didn't uh, serve any plates anymore, but you started serving wine. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, what, yeah. what happened? Who who gave you the the opportunity or the shot to 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 go for the for the wines instead of the plates? So. The, the same hotel, uh, the, the same hotel where I was, uh, where I started uh, as a uh, as a runner, 
uh, they offered me an opportunity to become a waiter because I was so fast uh, and I, I learned so fast and I knew also how to maneuver the system. Um, and uh, yeah, they just gave me an opportunity. They said, do you want to be a waiter? Then I said, yeah, of course, why not? Um, yeah, because up until that point, you didn't have any wine education or course yeah. or yeah, yeah. you were just quick learner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just a quick learner and then I just took it uh, and then just ran with it. Um, yeah, so I then you know, did a little bit of waitering. But for me, you know, I'm an, I'm an, I'm an academia. I'm coming from a background of, of schooling. Yeah. So I was also now starting to look at uh, where is the opportunities. Uh, how can I embed myself in this, uh, in this industry? Um, then I started, uh, you know, looking for, for, for colleges where to actually study about um, about wine. Uh, initially, actually, what it, uh, I actually thought you could study to be a waiter. So that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Uh, and um, uh, then I stumbled across wine and also with the fascination um, for uh, of, of my other colleagues, you know, that they actually knowing about wine already. There are some colleagues in the audience, but they're from Holland, but they're really a fan of you. So <laughs> I can only imagine it was the same in South Africa because uh, <laughs> pe people like you. You're a friendly person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. So then, then, then I just um, uh, I just started with the Cape Wine Academy. I, uh, I did uh, until um, until my my diploma level, and uh, then I also started with uh, with the WSCT as well, uh, which uh, at that time it was a really really expensive uh, uh, program to actually do uh, but uh, you know it's it was actually in, uh, recognized in 66 countries in the world yeah and uh, for me my passion was actually to travel after that you know to, uh, to go, not to stay in south africa but travel abroad and also find some so you were thinking i need to have this international uh, recognized certificate uh, in order to get the value outside of south africa as well for this yeah 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 exactly yeah so that was uh, the, that was the idea. So um, I, I did that, uh, and uh, eventually, you know, the hotel became uh, really small for me because uh, I, I I was now you know in the wine bar was there. So yeah. then I left the, the hotel. And then I I went uh, to a restaurant which was in the same valley. Then I started off as a wine um, as a wine steward. Yeah. Uh, at Mama Cucina restaurant, that's where I built my first wine list there, and uh, I was. So this restaurant gave you the opportunity to basically set up your your own wine list, and then from there on, you were fully in charge for yeah. their for all their wines, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, that's uh, that's what that's what they did. Um, yeah, and uh, then 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 I, I just took it. Uh, I just took it, man, because um, uh, for me, I I did I didn't had any fear because. I could see the opportunity that where that wine was actually opening up for me. So yeah. I took it. I created the, the, my my wine list there. I was actually selling wines uh, and also waitering also at the same time. Um, and uh, I listed the wines. Of, uh, worked with um, wines from Malinu, from Ibn Sadi, uh, from uh, Ryan Mostert, uh, and also from Adi Barinos as well in the, in the valley. So it, it, it you know it was a, a really good corner because I could also I could also actually get some really cool wines from you were right in the middle and also connected to all these people and just not just yeah. having the wine on the menu also talking yeah. to the winemakers and uh, visiting them I guess yeah yeah definitely definitely yeah so yeah that that that, uh, that was and, the and, and then and then you uh, well became uh, even more in demand I mean you even won an award there at some point. Uh, yeah. It was recognized as a young sommelier. Yes. Uh, well, that, that that happened uh, in 2017 when I was actually one of the best uh, young sommeliers from from South Africa, which was a competition that was uh, uh, rolled out by uh, Moet and Shalon. Um, and uh, and at that time, I was actually working in Cape Town at uh, Aubergine Restaurant. Uh, you know, where where I came in as an assistant sommelier, but uh, I also moved very fast as well to just become a, a sommelier in about uh, in about six months uh, because you know I, I was just grasping you know and you know the hunger of just wanting to learn more and wanting yeah. to, 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 uh, to impress and understand uh, understanding um, uh, uh, the, uh, the industry you know so 
uh, yeah, that that was the journey uh, in uh, in South Africa. Um, so there, so there, you learned a lot about the South African wine industry. You learned a lot about wines in general. You learned a lot about a lot about the hospitality business. Um, yeah. And then, obviously, uh, there was a, a second part uh, in your career or another part, which we are right now at. But um, we will come to that later. But maybe yeah. first, now when we talk about all these great winemakers from South Africa, um, also for the audience to understand a little bit the background of South Africa. So uh, if you compare it to uh, uh, the old world countries, it's uh, quite a different wine country, I would say. And that's obviously because of the, the way it's, it's uh, uh, organized, structured, but also because of the history that was attached to it. So can you tell us a little bit about how that uh, South Africa as a wine country got started? Well, I, uh, when, I, when, I, when I look at South Africa, uh, for, for me, I think... Uh, uh, it's one of the one of the uh, one of the new world uh, fast uh, fast growing uh, uh, region. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, also, a, a lot of uh, exciting uh, exciting uh, stuff which is happening. Um, and uh, I always want to I always want to put South Africa in its own corner because uh, if we look at uh, the old world and then we look at the new world. If we want to compare the the two, um, uh, the, the two uh, on, on the same level, it's quite yep. different because the, the new world uh, it's 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 a bit more warmer. It's um, uh, South Africa actually depends on you know it depends on uh, only on the Indian Ocean and the, uh, and the Atlantic Ocean, you know the microclimate. Yep. Uh, we don't have a specific uh, uh, a specific time that we say this is a, the a region that which is. This is a cooler region because yeah, so of, a lot is the same basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, whereas you know the, the new one, you know, you, you you go to Burgundy, it's cooler, you know. Yeah, the differences are quite, uh, or let's say the uniqueness is there, and it yeah. can only be uh, two, three hundred kilometers, but still yeah. you have quite a lot of differences there in the new yeah, world, in the old world. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so um, well, it, it, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, South Africa, I, uh, in terms of viticulture wise, you know, uh, um, wh what is known to be the biggest uh, the, the biggest uh, region where which is known by most um, most tourists or or which has made the mark for South Africa is actually Stellenbosch, uh, which you know it has also just about sixteen sixteen point five percent of the plantings of vineyards. Uh, but yeah, shockingly, also they produce uh, less uh, than uh, than other than other regions, um, and you know everything uh, everything actually started really working out after 1994, yeah. uh, where, where 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 there was also a bit more of an inclu inclusive uh, inclusive uh, uh, inclusive industry in terms of welcoming also. Uh, the less marginalized uh, winemakers that we're trying also to come on board. Um, uh, but yeah, in terms of uh, production wise and also the main regions, um, I, I can also uh, mention uh, regions like Swatland, the Green yep. uh, Valley, Olifants as well, uh, with quite a lot of um, exciting, uh, exciting uh, grape varietals, exciting um, uh, new winemakers that are coming on board, uh, and also new varietals which are. Um, you know, which are drought resistant that are also being uh, planted as well to uh, counter the, 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 the issue of uh, global warming as well. So, yeah, so South Africa is quite, uh, quite, uh, quite interesting. And so so what, what happened there? Uh, we know what happened in the mid-90s, but uh, what was the, if you look before the mid-90s and after, in terms of the wine that's being produced, there was also there's also a lot of change that happened. So we have some typical grape varieties, obviously for South Africa. Maybe yeah. first we we name the most popular ones that uh, are being produced there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we actually um, and now you know there's there's more uh, after the nineties. There's more diversification, which is yeah. happening. Uh, you you also have. Uh, a, Mainstream grape varieties, which is more like uh, Chenin Blanc, which constitutes the most plantings of uh, of the vineyard, uh, yep. just above eighteen percent. Uh, that is actually now becoming, uh, you know, the number one white wine grape for South Africa. With, uh, you know, from region to region, uh, wines are actually being made from Big River, 
uh, Stellenbosch, but stylistically everything is actually different to Swatland as well, but with uh, a bit of more of, uh, diversification. Uh, so uh, past the, 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 the 90s, I would say, um, I would say there is more and more exciting, uh, exciting stuff which is happening because before that, um, there was no much accessibility for the small uh, growers to actually uh, export their products uh, themselves to, to yeah. the foreign markets. So you would only have the, the, lo the local consumption, which uh, yeah. was not uh, there was no demand for basically for the other priorities there. Yeah, 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 exactly. But then also uh, the, lo the, the small growers were actually selling to conglomerate uh, companies. Uh, so the conglomerate companies would actually determine what style is actually exposed. Yeah. So they were just saying, okay, uh, stick to Chenin Blanc uh, yeah. because we don't want uh, all these other varieties because we cannot sell them. We just want to have bollock. So everybody produces the same. It's easy. People will drink it anyway. We don't need uh, new varieties to come in. That's what they were saying, basically. Yeah, and th th there was no actually appreciation for uh, for new grape varieties, and also at that time uh, the global warming was not that issue. And no. Also, and also the you know the big companies they had the budgets to actually uh, uh, explore the explore the international market. Uh, so now, uh, but but now if you fast forward that uh, from ninety four ninety five uh, from ninety from the two thousands, you see now the small. Uh, small independent producers, uh, they are more visible uh, in into the international markets now because they have actually managed to crack that uh, that that market. And so, there is internet, so they can profile themselves, and it's easier to get recognized as well. I mean, you just can take the plane normally when there is no co Corona. You can fly somewhere and, and bring your wines, introduce them somewhere. It's easier than 20 years ago. Yeah, it, it's easier than 20 years ago uh, because now it, it was it was like more more like uh, Switzerland. It was more like a monopole. Very isolated. Yeah, yeah, where only only the the big companies that have the budgets can actually export. Yes. Uh, the export product, which was actually put out there, uh, was actually uh, not the actual product that would represent South Africa as a, as a wine country because it was all commercial. Uh, you know, very easy, uh, easy, easy going wines. No, uh, no, no excitement. Yeah, no terroir driven wines that were being made. So it was really, really um, uh, uh, short changing the, uh, the, uh, the industry. So besides the Chenin Blanc, uh, which uh, varieties are also being, if we took at uh, look at the, the, the bigger uh, varieties as Pinot, uh, Pinotage, obviously, but. Uh, some yeah. Others? yeah, 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 yeah. Pinotage. Uh, well, uh, speaking of uh, Pinotage, it's, it's it's quite interesting because uh, we don't have uh, uh, we don't have uh, more uh, much plantings of Pinotage. I think we have about just just below eight percent uh, of uh, total vineyard a hectare. Uh, but it is actually a local grape varietal, which uh, you know it's a crossing between Pinot Noir and Cinso. Yeah, but uh, it's actually done by. Um, uh, a Stellenbosch University uh, a lecturer uh, in 1925, uh, and you know it, it is actually what what represent. It's uh, a sort of a household name or a brand, but you're saying uh, that's a bit strange because if you look at the numbers, <laughs> it's not really that uh, popular uh, as some others. Yeah, I, I think I, I think also mainly because uh, you know the mainstream, uh, the classics, they always uh, sell. Yeah. Uh, South Africa is also coming, you know, it's influenced by the by, by the old world, uh, by the old world style, you know. So that's why you have more uh, more classic grape varietals like Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, Merlot, uh, Merlot. Not really that much, but uh, uh, it, it gets blended. It gets blended mostly into uh, Bordeaux style varietals. Yeah, but it's, isn't that the same with the Pinotage? I mean, obviously there is a single uh, variety Pinot, Pinotage, but a lot of the Pinotage is also being used in the blend. So um, it, you only need a couple percent. So, well, it's I don't know what is the the is there there is a minimum for for blending uh, for Pinotage, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending on the region. Yeah, yeah. We we, we make uh, we make uh, we make uh, what is uh, called a cap blend. So yeah, cap blend. A yeah, cap blend should actually. Uh, should actually constitute at least 75% uh, of um, of pinotage, and the rest can be can be any other any grapes. 
but uh, still, uh, you know, I, I, I still believe that, you know, uh, Pinotage also, uh, in the beginning, it had a really bad name because it was made, uh, it was extracted too much. Uh, and it's a great variety that needs patience. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to stress it out because that creates bad wine. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, yeah. So, um, so yeah, so uh, Pinotage is uh, is the le least actually uh, least uh, um, uh, least uh, least planted, uh, but uh, mainly it, it gets into uh, it gets into cab blends. Uh, and and, and uh, the other reds that you named was Cabernet, for example, Melo, some. Yeah, yeah, Cabernet, Merlot, uh, Shiraz. Yeah, uh, Shiraz, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Carignan. Uh, you also have. Uh, you also have now the new trend, which is coming, uh, which is coming up. Uh, Spanish grape varietals like Viura that are also being planted as well. Uh, you also have Asetico as well, which is being planted because uh, these are grape varietals that are actually uh, uh, resistant uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to drought. So uh, more and more plantings uh, of um, uh, of such uh, such varietals, but the classics are always uh, always sell and uh, they're always uh, uh, always always a top priority. But I also heard that um, uh, obviously there some of the vines are really old. People don't really realize that maybe, but uh, for a new world country, there's some really old vines, right? I mean, what are some of the oldest vines that are being found and being still in in, in production? Yeah, well, it's you, you know we in South Africa we actually um, it, it's such young uh, uh, young one country. We only have a, a history of about 350 years. Mm -hmm. uh, actually uh, uh, probably the only the only wine country that can actually uh, date back exactly when the first bottle was actually bottled yeah uh, and we have a vineyards uh, as old as from 1925 uh, and these vineyards are still uh, are still in production um, uh, even Sally has um, uh, has a has a Chenin Blanc which is uh, which is named, uh, named after the, the owner of that property which is called my floor Keston which is uh, that old, which only produces a limited, uh, limited quantity as well, uh, a wine which is so precious. Uh, and we also have uh, the old vine project as well, which is, uh, you know, uh, which is actually uh, working on capturing all the old vine, um, uh, all the old vines that are in South Africa. Uh, uh, that's an interesting story because a lot of countries, people uh, use old vines as a marketing term so uh, basically in no country there is law or legislation about this only in south africa this is the only country where they register basically uh, old fines and that you can't say you, you can only say that they're old if it's in the register right yeah 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 yeah, yeah definitely because because uh, uh, our old vines uh, uh, a benchmark of an old vine is 35 years old so it needs to be minimum 35 years old yeah 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 exactly so it, we, we we actually have uh, the, old, the older ones also 45 uh, 60 75 uh, years old uh, but everything is actually certified that it is indeed uh, it is indeed an old vine and one people can see that on the bottle right isn't there a label that uh, refers to that yeah you have the old vine project which is actually put a, a seal of uh, uh, a stamp of a uh, seal which is uh, yeah a certification um, and um, and it, it certifies basically that this is an actually an, an old vine and when when, an, when, when, it, when it's an old vine then it technically it gets into a heritage vineyard uh, yeah. uh, which is actually protected very well with uh, with the government so those vines you cannot uh, pull them uh, pull them out anymore so there is a, a question from the audience on this topic. I mean, I don't always interrupt with questions, but this one is on topic. So let's go with that one. Um, how difficult is it to register those fines and, and who does the registration for that? Um, well, that's a good question. There is actually um, uh, the old vine project is actually um, uh, uh, chaired by uh, a team of, uh, uh, a team of uh, some of the best uh, viticulturists from South Africa. Uh, one of them is actually Rosa Kruger, who was, who was my, my mentor uh, from... Mm -hmm. uh, 
and also uh, the likes of Ibn Saadi uh, is also on the board as well. Uh, and this is also set, uh, the certified as well with the Saudis, uh, because Saudis has to be in um, uh, in there as well to certify that it, it is indeed uh, uh, an, uh, an, an, an old vine. The, the, the process is quite strict. Uh, there, there is no there is no uh, there is no cheating in there because uh, they is uh, actually um, these are Cape Wine Masters that are doing this. Uh, these are uh, uh, world renowned uh, winemakers that are also uh, certifying, uh, certifying. So the winemakers, so there is a limited amount of, let's say, well known winemakers that does the certification for if you have a vineyard and you were looking to get certified, you get those guys visiting you and visiting the, the vineyards. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's 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 both with uh, from from winemakers, viticulture list as well, uh, and uh, it's it's a pity that there has not been uh, there has not been a budget which has been set aside by the government to do this research. Uh, but uh, you know, winemakers and viticulture list and also a bit of uh, a scientist as well, uh, also just you know chipping in with uh, the little budget they have. Uh, and actually going on an expedition to actually identify all the old vineyards which are in which are in South Africa. So it, it is. Uh, so they're making one big log basically with yeah. everything in there. That's the the, the end plan and yeah. goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So and and how difficult is it to? I mean, this goes hand in hand with production capacity or yields uh, basically, because well, uh, most people know that the older the vine. Uh, the less grapes it produces. Uh, I mean, the intensity of the fruit increases as well. But um, I think that is also one of the reasons why some of these old vines are not active anymore or being pulled out and replaced in, the, in well, maybe not in the recent years, but in the years before, because they just didn't produce enough anymore or? Um, so, so basically, uh, basically uh, old vines are always kept because they are uh, uh, heritage vineyards. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, in 2000, I think we ha we had the same we had a uh, same problem in 2015. There was uh, land which was uh, uh, which was actually bought by a private uh, by a private uh, uh, owner, and mm -hmm. he had some uh, some old vineyards which could potentially be uh, would have actually produced some really fine. But they were pulled out, uh, but now you know the goal is to actually. Try to protect all the uh, the old uh, the old vineyards, and coming back to your question is uh, uh, yeah the older the uh, the older the uh, the vineyard uh, becomes, uh, the less production uh, it it also uh, produces as well, uh, and uh, I think also an example is my forecasting. I think uh, a few people in uh, a few people in the uh, in uh, in the audience also know that wine as well. It's very limited. Production, it's only like two barrels that it's uh, produced as well. Uh, mm -hmm. The heritage is the heritage that uh, having having a quality wine, a premium wine, which is actually coming from from South Africa, uh, with that uh, that quality, and that can actually also uh, stand in you know with with uh, stand in the same uh, wine as well. So yeah. Okay. Um, so. We talked a little bit about history. We talked a little bit about what South Africa has to offer in terms of uh, uh, wines, uh, wine regions. Um, there is one thing I would like to talk about, which I think is quite typical and also uh, already alludes a little bit to our guest for next week, um, because next week we're having a South African winemaker. Well, he's not South African. We have a winemaker from South Africa, um, and um, he practices uh, what we preach uh, here, what we're going to preach here, because. What is typical, um, it's not unique, but I think it's typical for South Africa, is that you have the wine domains that own the vineyards, basically. But you also have a lot of, next to that, you have a, a big group of winemakers that don't own any vineyards, right? Yeah. So if you talk about numbers first, what numbers are we looking at in terms of the, uh, let's say, the, the, the wineries and then on top of that, the independent winemakers? Um, numbers, correct numbers. Uh, uh, approximately, we, we we actually have at least about uh, at least about two thousand two thousand three hundred fifty uh, uh, farmers. This include actually uh, this include uh, the farmers that do the domain that does have the uh, the winery. Yeah. Uh, 
and uh, there is also a plus or minus plus or minus um, 300, 300 brands that are actually working within within a domain but with a separate uh, separate brand so these are more like you know uh, uh, these are more like sourcing the uh, the grapes or sourcing the juice from so they're in, they're independent basically they're not linked yeah. to the domains yeah, exactly. They're independent and they're not uh, linked to the, to the domain, but they actually sourcing. Uh, sourcing. They're not. They're not great growers, but they're winemakers. Yeah, yeah, they're winemakers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, and most, some of them are, are, not, are not even winemakers, but uh, they, they they do like the blending process. Uh, they're blenders. Yeah. So they they actually come in and they know because they know the the taste which they actually want to achieve at the end of the day. Uh, I have a very good example of uh, Kumusha wines uh, from uh, from Chinashi um, uh, he, he basically he's not he's not the, the viticulture this is not the winemaker uh, but he has uh, he, he knows has, what he needs and can that, get that together in a blend yeah exactly yeah so that that's when he comes when the wine is made uh, he comes into the cellar now he blends his blends for his brand so so there is uh, there is quite a there is quite a, a, a growing number of that which is like plus. Uh, uh, yeah, plus you, I, I have a side question to that for you. Would you be a good blender? Because I know you participated in a blind tasting a lot of blind tasting contests. You even went into a world championship. Uh, maybe uh, tell us a little bit about world championship. You you went for. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In 2000, uh, 2017, I was uh, uh, I was in uh, uh, the top five uh, top five best tasters from South Africa, uh, and uh, that also awarded me to uh, to go and participate in the World Blind Testing Championship um, in 2017 and also in 2018 as well, and then came uh, number 14 in the world. Um, so yeah, blending uh, blending is uh, uh, I've done that before. Uh, yeah. Uh, I've made a wine before as well, which is so uh, you made your own wine. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did made a uh, made, uh, made a wine, um, not technically being the farmer, but uh, coming in at the end process to actually blend in the wine yeah. and, and, and bottle. Uh, so yeah, yeah, blending is, uh, is it's something you could do. You did it before, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But it's a craft. So it's 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 something. Very specific, which you where you need uh, some very specific skills to be able to do that. Because uh, also, and that that goes the same for the winemakers that don't grow the grapes. You you don't know what happens in the vineyards because you're working with the end product as a grape, and then you're going to make the wine out of that. But yeah. um, a winemaker who is in his vineyards every day sees the growing process of the grapes and knows the the legacy of the vineyard so knows a lot of the things about the grapes before they even arrive to be uh, used for the wine but if you're a, a winemaker like an independent winemaker what we talked about you don't have all this knowledge basically yeah well, yeah, well it's uh, uh, probably you have you have the uh, you have the the, the theory uh, theory of it um, yeah. of how 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 it actually happens in the in, in in the vineyard? How it happens also in the cellar, and what basically you want? Uh, what what basically you understand is the is the taste, uh, because you know after sitting at the different uh, uh, judging panels, you 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 become you become um, you become actually acquainted with different tastes for different markets, and so you start linking all these together to yeah, yeah. to sort of a library in your head. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that that, that quite that helps quite a lot uh, in terms of uh, uh, blending wine because if you are blending a wine, you you're not blending a wine that is going to be consumed uh, the next day. You it's blending. an ingredient basically, but it also needs work after. Yeah, yeah, it also needs uh, work uh, work after as well. Okay, and um, so next week we're gonna have uh, uh, Joseph uh, from Mosey Wines. Uh, Mosey Wines wine maker brands from south africa um well you know him so uh later in the show at the end you can uh, uh get the opportunity to ask him a question which we will answer uh, then obviously um i have a question from our guest guest from last week but before we do that we're gonna taste some wine so i've asked you obviously we always need to drink a wine so i've asked you which wine shall we drink and then you picked the glenelli 
Chardonnay, a state reserve. Yes, yes. T tell us why you picked this wine before we start drinking it. It's, uh, it, it's, it's very interesting. Um, uh, it's a very interesting uh, uh, winery, uh, which has a direct link uh, between France uh, and South Africa. And so, so Madame May from uh, 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 Pichon Lalande Comtesse in, uh, in Bordeaux. Uh, purchased uh, this uh, Glen Ely in 2003. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, I, her idea was actually to bring the supremacy of, of Bordeaux to, to South Africa, but uh, without, without actually uh, trying to recreate, uh, recreate Bordeaux. So it's not, it, doesn't need, it was not planned to make a copy of Bordeaux? Yes. So, so, so what, what, what she did, uh, she started actually making uh, uh, Bordeaux style blends because they're actually sitting at the, uh, at the Simosbeck, uh, Simosbeck Mountains in, in Selimosh. And um, she started making, uh, uh, you know, the Bordeaux grape varieties, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, uh, and also a bit of some Ron as well with uh, Shiraz as well, uh, and some Merlot as well. Um, so they plant. So they planted. They started planting all these different typical Bordeaux varieties. And this is what they started. Yeah. Was there, was there a winery already there, or did they start a whole new project as, as a new? No, there was actually a winery there, uh, but they took over the winery and uh, renamed uh, renamed uh, the winery and uh, started their own uh, their own project. Uh, and planted some new varieties as well. Then. Yeah. The... Yeah, planted some new varieties as well because uh, they later thought that okay, so we have now all the Bordeaux varietals, but okay, we probably have people that are going to come to us uh, in summer. What are we going to uh, give them? Yes, and they decided okay, so we are going to make uh, Chardonnay. Uh, so what they like to do is they like to use um, uh, old yeast, uh, which is this is. Uh, um, wild yeast and uh, which is in the cellar uh it's, it's a bit of a risk business because if you just put your wine into this into the cellar hoping that uh the um hoping that uh, uh the yeast is going to start re-fermenting mm -hmm. and that's not, then you know you, you would have actually made a very um, a very nice vinegar you know uh, yeah so it can go it, it can totally blow up in your face basically <laughs> yeah exactly yeah but um, but they like to do um, uh, as natural as possible and uh, as uh, sustainable as possible. So, so that that's the whole reason behind it, or is there more reasons? The reason is because they want to do it natural, or is there also when it comes to the flavor and what you will get, is there also another effect uh, of using the wild yeast? Yeah, yeah, they want to be as natural as possible. Okay. Uh, they also want to be as sustainable as possible as well. Um, you know, but when, when it's actually needed for them to actually acidify wine, they, they would because otherwise the wine does not have, um, does not have a, a shelf life. Um, yeah. So, yeah, but... Um, but uh, so, so and, and then you picked this one, so the Chardonnay, you told us a little bit, okay, in the summer they have a lot of tourists that come to South Africa, obviously you need some good, nice white wine there, Chardonnay is, uh, yeah. is nice for that, so what are yeah. we drinking? Tell us a little bit about this this particular one. Now I'll take a I'll take a sip and then you, yeah. can, you can tell us. Yeah. Well. Uh, so what what uh, what we're tasting now is a 2019 uh, uh, Estate Reserve Chardonnay from. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's uh, that's that's the perfect one. Yeah, we have the same one. Eh? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> 2019. Uh, which you know obviously it, it stayed in uh, uh, in, uh, in, in in the barrels and this is a uh, Begandian oak which um, uh, it was kept for about 12 months uh, and also a little bit of uh, some uh, uh, some lease contract as well that uh, that has been done to also give the wine a little bit of some structure yeah. uh, it's quite a, quite a bit more like a serious wine because um, it, it gives you quite a, quite a lot of uh, layers um, uh, on your palate. Uh, you have uh, quite a lot of this banana, which uh, you have also a little bit more of that uh, tropical stone fruits like bruised apples as well, which also comes uh, comes through as well uh, on the on the nose. And the palate is just you know it it, it is you know the perfect wine, especially uh, with. Um, 
uh, with autumn coming, uh, I think this is actually, uh, you know, could be an, an everyday food wine uh, at, uh, at home. Even, even at colder temperatures, like you said, it doesn't need to be uh, summer and, and hot uh, weather. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, but yeah, for me, for me, uh, for me, actually, can be, uh, because I like I like my wine. I, I like to actually, you know, to to have more uh, fruit uh, structure. Uh, yeah. Wine. I, I like to you know to experience um, uh, to experience the wine and you know really um, f uh, seep after seep. You know, it, it develops. Yeah. yeah. So you, you you want to discover new things with every sip that you take, and not have like okay, first taste. This is the wine. It stays the same. Nothing happens. It's boring, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah exactly. This is not boring. <laughs> yeah, this is not boring. Yeah, this is not boring. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is a great wine, and um, I think um, um, that also maybe uh, talks. Uh, let's jump a little bit to what you're doing today uh, these days. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about that as well, because I mean, you're in Holland. We can tell people that you're not in South Africa. Some people might not know, but tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, now it's um, uh, obviously yeah, I moved to, to Holland uh, uh, doing exports, uh, uh, imports, uh, and export of South African wines uh, into, into Holland uh, to sell not just in Holland, but into the EU. Um, but uh, uh, and, and, and I have uh, um, uh, my own company now, which is uh, called Swill and Sip Fine Wines, uh, where you can actually get uh, some exclusive, uh, exclusive small independent wineries uh, from South Africa, uh, wines with a bit of some stories, uh, wines that you know really connect, uh, uh, connect with, um, uh, connect with people. Because I believe uh, wine is a journey. Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, it could be your journey uh, of your personal experience with the wine, and it could be also a journey you experiencing with others as well. Uh, because yeah, wine is not an ornament, so you yeah. need to be drunk. So yeah, what what. Um, what we do is uh, so, so, so you jumped into the importing well uh, first of all exporting from yeah. south africa to europe but importing into europe yeah. and uh, sort of being a, an ambassador for south african wines and also the let's say the more authentic smaller producers and not the uh, the well-known big names maybe but more the well yeah. the unique identity uh and winemakers yeah yeah yeah, yeah. For, for me for me it was uh, it was about uh authenticity um uh, because i think uh I think in 2017, when I when I came here first to actually just uh, look at the market, um, I looked at the market and I saw that uh, in terms of South African wine, uh, there is uh, there is a premium wine, uh, and there is the cheap wine that you you get from uh, from a grocery uh, shop. Yeah, uh, so you have two levels: you have cheap and you have expensive. You have expensive, yeah. So, uh, and and if it's expensive, it's really expensive. You actually have to. Uh, you, you have to get a mortgage, you know, to, to buy a bottle. Yeah. But um, so the idea was to bring in, you know, really cool, exciting stories. Cool, exciting. So you're, you're filling up, you're filling up this middle part, which yeah. is also unknown to a lot of people in Europe. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Middle part, which is uh, which is unknown uh, to um, uh, to a lot of people uh, in uh, in Holland. Uh, and also focusing on not the commercial brands, which you know they're quite big. They are there. They have all the budgets that they can actually. They need to actually to to export wines anywhere. It's not. It's not even about the wine. It's more about the money they can spend on marketing yeah. and advertising, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah. Basically, uh, basically, that's that. For me, the authenticity. Uh, the young, uh, the young and upcoming winemakers, people of color that are making wines, uh, women in wine, uh, the the whole the whole uh, package of uh, you know uh, exclusive. Uh, that's 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 basically that's basically what uh, what my um, my, um, my 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 thinking was um, uh, studying the uh, studying the uh, uh, Swansea uh, fine wines of. Uh, Importing South African wines into so, if people want to try something really authentic, unique, and something which they cannot buy at every corner of the street, uh, and want to really taste a good wine, they should go to your company, and yeah. then they can uh, get uh, advice from you also. 
Yeah, yeah. You're, you are a sommelier by heart, so it's yeah. not just about selling the wine; it's also giving advice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's uh, yeah, we, it's it's basically also for me uh, simplifying uh, simplifying uh, wine because um, uh, wine is actually known to to be a little bit more pretentious. I, I try to yeah. you know, break it down, uh, also to bring the uh, the experience of a sommelier. Uh, into your home you know because uh what we do uh on our website is uh, you we, we sell wines that have actually recommendations so we just don't send you the wine we sell you the experience yeah so you you do the selection for the for the customer they just have to sit down sit back and order and then they get the box and yeah. then they can start uh, being guided by you can start experiencing south african wines basically yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, uh, that's the uh, that's the idea, and um, uh, it, you know, it's it's quite uh, because of uh, because of uh, the, the pandemic, uh, uh, most people are actually uh, dining at home. Yeah, and uh, once you're dining at home, it's not everyone who has the skills to actually know. Yeah, or a big seller that they can take every bottle they want and have one for every occasion. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, so in that in, in that sense as well, uh, I'm also working with uh, um, some of the to top chefs in the, in the Netherlands as well. Uh, mm -hmm. we, have, we have also some top sommeliers here. Our colleagues, uh, Dutch colleagues, uh, watching here as well. Yes. So they they know you as well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, good friends. I see. Uh, I see. I see them in the comment section. There. Yeah. Boy. Uh, I see Rene. I see Edgar is there as well. Um, uh, well, I see Tanashi, my homeboy as well, he's in there. <laughs> so it's, it, it shows that uh, not just you know a lot about wine, it's also that you are a very social guy and uh, fun to be around and uh, just, well, a genuine guy that loves wine and wants to help South African wine industry to, uh, well, open up for a bigger stage in Europe, basically. That's, that's the plan. Yeah, 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 definitely. That's a plan. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, look, uh, actually speaking about that, you know, uh, if you look at uh, the uh, the wine industry in South Africa, it actually contributes about nine nine point three billion uh, to the GDP. Uh, You're making a nice bridge here because we have one big topic we want to discuss today. Huh? <laughs> it's, we're smiling, but it's not funny. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's yeah. It's 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 quite um, uh, and, and, and you know it has been, it has been hit you know by not one not two but three uh, local alcohol uh, cell ban, uh, which you know it it, it doesn't uh, bring justice to uh, to to the to the economy itself uh, because it's actually uh, sabotaging itself of uh, of billions and billions of uh, of income. Uh, uh, both locally and uh, uh, and also uh, you know it's it, you know it's 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 over um, it's it, it's over three it's over a hundred hundred fifty thousand families that are actually uh, employed directly or indirectly by the wine uh, industry in South Africa. So rewind a little bit. Corona is a big topic, but uh, it's in South Africa. It, in Europe, it's nothing compared to what it is in South Africa, because you're talking about three alcohol bans, and yep. we didn't have any alcohol ban here. Okay, restaurants are closed, which is a bad thing, but people can still buy wine. They can drink wine at home, but in South Africa, for three times, there is a ban where they cannot get any alcohol. Yeah. And on top of that, uh, if we talk about the uh, importance of the wine the economy for the country and for the people living in the country 150,000 people families yeah yeah that yeah that's uh, yeah over 150,000 families that are actually uh, benefiting from uh, from the wine industry uh, and, and then there is also the tourism also linked yeah. to that as well obviously because it's a big puller for the tourism industry the wine yeah yeah exactly yeah so uh, yeah, so it it, it, it is uh, well, the, the the industry it, itself uh, it, it is actually employing uh, you know directly and indirectly from uh, from uh, from hospitality to uh, marketeers to uh, you know the, the farm workers to sommeliers to waiters you know this is the whole uh, the whole shebang which. Yeah. Uh, which you know uh, it has been it has been affected to such this extent that 
there's 640 million liters of wine which is stuck in uh, in the market uh, it's still because um talking about that talking about importing and exporting a lot of the wine is being consumed in south africa so that wine can go nowhere uh, obviously there are wines and winemakers that export quite some but also they obviously take a hit because uh, uh let's say restaurants all over Europe and other countries are uh, are being closed as well. So also the export has gone down. But yeah. it's not that easy as, as okay saying, okay, we've got uh, thousands of bottles. We're just going to put them on the ship and bring them to another country because that's not how you can do it. Just stock in warehouses literally, right? Yeah, but it's, yeah, this is, uh, this is juice which is actually stuck at, uh, 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 in the cellars uh, uh, and it's also stuck uh, at the wineries. Uh, but now, but now they're doing the new harvest at the moment. They're starting to do new harvest for the new vintage. So, yeah. what's going to happen with the wine in the cellars now? It, it, it's it's going to pile up then eh? because um, uh, the only hope for for South African industry now is is export. But uh, how how much uh, how much can the export market take from uh, from South Africa? Because you need to sell first before you can actually uh, buy more wines from South Africa. Uh, but oh yeah. Plus, yeah. plus we plus you will have winemakers that already do export a lot. They yeah. have let's say the first take, and then uh, you can have maybe some percent on top of that. But not everybody. There's not a room for everybody to jump on this uh, uh, export. Yeah, there's no room uh, for for uh, for everybody. But uh, also the awareness of um, uh, of uh, the consumption of South African wines, uh, uh, say in the EU, uh, yeah. very low. Um, and uh, so how can we help besides the fact that obviously Corona needs to go away and the ban needs to go away but how can we help in Europe to um, uh, relieve some even if it's just a little bit of the um, the problems that the wine industry has and maybe not even now also afterwards when Corona is gone well, I think I think more consumption of uh, South African wines is. Uh, yeah, but but then then I'm gonna buy these uh, big brands again. So, who's gonna make money from that? Um, um, you know, you, you know what happens now is, uh, which I think uh, who needs the most support is actually the smaller brands. Yeah. Uh, because uh, these guys they don't have that much exposure. If you look at uh, the uh, the bigger brands, they're in Albert Heijn, they're in Jumbo, they're. Yeah. You know, this, this is just a money play, so they do it at a very cheap price, and it's not about that Albert Heijn or any other supermarket doesn't care about what, what let's say, quality or, let's say, uh, level it is, because it's just about the cheapest price. Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. So I, I would say, you know, try and find, uh, try and find, to try and find some exclusive South African wines uh, coming from... So people need to look around a little bit more. And maybe uh, dive into uh, the more unknown winemakers or wines that are available in Europe. But how can they find them? Okay, they can go to your website, which obviously helps them. But is there a, is there a, like an organization that helps to to shed some light on these producers? That I think uh, I, I think if you look uh, if you look at uh, uh, was uh, nl yeah. Uh, they they actually do have um, uh, they actually do have uh, uh, you know a, a diary with um, uh, a diary with um, uh, with uh, uh, all the importers that actually uh, boutique importers that. Actually so there is a lock a lock there that states yeah. the importers that can offer South African offer wines from, uh, from different regions from the south to the north. Uh, there is quite a lot of uh, uh, a lot of importers listed there. Uh, just find uh, find a boutique uh, boutique wine shop which is just around around the corner. Um, and maybe um, some restaurants when they open again. Uh, I know that uh, well. You, you opened the door for quite some nice brands there as well. So maybe if they go to a restaurant, then it's a good restaurant. They can ask maybe the somebody. Maybe you have a South African wine which is, yeah. you want to treat us to, and then it's the first encounter basically as well yeah 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 definitely definitely it's yeah uh, if we look at uh, the netherlands it's actually um it, it, it's it's clustered you know with uh because it's close by everything there's spanish wines portuguese italian yeah. uh french wines that's everything is there everything is there 
but uh, you know, thinking of uh, the the new world just coming outside of the box and you know trying to find this niche uh, South African wines that have, that delivers the same quality but uh, at an affordable price. Uh, I think it, it would actually go a, a, a long way. Very interesting. Great. Uh, I know some sommeliers are watching, as we said, so uh, I know they're already working with you or worked with you in the past, but let's have them keep on doing it because I think uh, there's a nice showcase for South African wines uh, as well in the restaurants. So let's hope they can open up again. And a friend of the show, Yamit, is watching and uh, obviously with her gorgeous wine puzzles. And with a good suggestion, maybe we should do a South African puzzle to create some awareness. I think that's a good idea, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. I, uh, I think it's the best thing to. It's the best thing to do. Yeah, people just need to be a little bit more educated and go uh, beyond the big supermarket chains, uh, chains to to discover new wines and discover more about South Africa. I think today today's show is very helpful for that as well. I mean, a lot of pop people asked uh, asked me uh, to, well, uh, to talk a little bit about uh, a country in general. And for us, like you said, it's easy to talk about Italy, uh, Germany, Spain. We have a lot of that uh, on the shelf everywhere, but uh, it's not always easy to find information about South Africa or Australia, New Zealand, uh, South America. So that's why we're doing this. Um, later, we also have an addition, an episode about the US, uh, which is obviously very interesting but I'm, I'm happy that you uh, could join us today so let's see if we still have some questions uh, from the audience and already I had one question coming in and we answered some questions but it's about your journey into the Netherlands uh, what was your main big challenge for you when you came to Holland uh, in convincing uh, maybe convincing the sommeliers uh, well, it, it, it's it's still a process to convince. Uh, so you're not ready with convincing them <laughs> to convince uh, the sommeliers because um, um, you know the Netherlands. What I found out when I came here is the Netherlands is actually a closed market when it comes to um, uh, import, export, the sales as well. Uh, you have uh, you have these traditional companies that have been in existence for a long time. So if uh, a new uh, if a new company is coming in to be a market, wanting to share the pie, uh, which uh, for me, for me, it, it was a really big challenge. It is still a big challenge because uh, this pie uh, and this traditional uh, uh, traditional supplier <coughs> do not really want to share the pie, uh, and um, uh, it, it, it become really a closed market, uh, even though even though it's actually the EU is an open market, but then it becomes a closed market. Uh, and then, yeah, it, it is still affected that um, uh, there, is, there is a few sommeliers that have opened up, um, uh, that have opened up to South African wines, that have opened up to, you know, to, to me actually supplying them with some uh, cool wines, which they, 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 they you know, they, they end up uh, even liking and the guests liking as well, because they such a huge culture between the Netherlands and South Africa, so and there's also um, the tourism in between in between South Africa and the Netherlands is quite it's quite huge. So you find that your your guests in the restaurant would have actually visited one estate, which is maybe the one actually saving. Yeah. So, so it, it 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 is still a challenge. Um, but we'll, we'll keep on we'll keep on working on it. And so, so, the, so the wine tourism sometimes is also creates even more one-sided view yes. uh, on South Africa and the wine industry and the wines that come from there. So, when when a guest is in a restaurant and um, somebody somebody will come with a South African wine and they will will have visited an, an estate and one of their holiday trips. Then they will go like, okay, well, I know this one, but this is something different. So, yeah, I'm not sure about this. I only know X estate number X, and then I want to go with that one. Yeah, that's also a challenge as well because um, you know, in the past, in the past, like I said before, uh, the conglomerates were actually uh, importing wines here, and the perception which the which the market now has is. Uh, South Africa, it's cheap. It has to be in Albert Heijn. It has to be in Jumbo. Yeah. And now there is uh, there is a new wave. Now there is the whole lot of um, 
very good winemakers making top quality class wines you know and uh, some of them they are competing uh, the prices with with some burgundies and uh, you know then 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 you have also the market which is now refraining and saying okay i would rather drink um, uh, a, a burgundy than a highly priced south african wine yeah. uh, so and 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 you know breaching that bringing something which is in between um, in between in, in between not expensive and and and, and cheap uh, but those are actually brands that are being introduced those are new brands so yep. people are like okay i don't know this brand you need now to convince them so that's where also uh, i come in and also the sommeliers must come in as well to actually educate people that okay this is um, you know this is a small independent brand they can they can tell the story which people don't always have time for or yeah. opportunity for when they're in a store buying something or just grabbing something from the shelf because there is no story when you're looking at the shelf there's just wine in a price card and if yeah. you don't know more then this is where your reference is in a restaurant or somebody has the opportunity to explain to you uh, where it's from what the story behind it but also they have another great tool i think is the food because when picking the right combination of the food and the wine it enforces obviously uh, the perception of what they just drank so after that, people will go like, okay, this this stuck with me, but it's not because of the wine, it's also because of the combination with the foods, right? Yeah, 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 yeah d definitely, definitely. Uh, I see we, we, we've, got a, we've got a question there. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, from if you were in a position to influence change to the South African wine industry, what would it be? So what would you change in South Africa? Um, I, I definitely, what I what I would actually uh, do is um, I would uh, try to have uh, to uh, to promote local tourism, uh, to promote uh, the local uh, a local wine consumption. Uh, in, in South Africa, we're one of uh, one of the biggest uh, uh, beer drinkers, one of the uh, uh, biggest uh, hard liquor uh, hard liquor uh, consumers. So create a shift towards the wine drinking in your home country. Yeah, well, not your home country, but in South Africa. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So I, I would actually increase uh, increase the the consumption, the, the fine wine consumption uh, in South Africa, local tourism in South Africa. I would actually increase that, and also education as well. Uh, I would actually uh, put it as a um, uh, as a as a subject uh, as a subject in. Uh, uh, from uh, from primary school that people can actually learn about uh, learn about wine and when they're in so they get so, so, so they value the local wine industry more even yeah 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 exactly yeah uh, because yeah we, we you know the, the, the market share that South Africa has uh, um, has in uh, uh, locally uh, yes of course it gives some liquidity uh, some liquidity in uh, to the to the wineries uh, but you know it's uh, it, it, it's 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 been known for a while to be uh, a drink of the elite. Yeah. Um, and when you get someone who wants to spend uh, for a bottle of wine, uh, they spend they spend on a brand and they spend a lot of money. Uh, but then you still have a lot of people that are not into the culture, and they don't understand uh, obviously what value wine has. Yes. Yeah. I would they, actually, don't, they, don't, they don't know what it takes to get the bottle in their hands, basically. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. So I would actually do. I would actually uh, um, uh, do that so that um, South Africa, South Africa is actually uh, sustainable uh, by itself. Yeah. And exporting comes as you know as an extra to yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to their um, uh, to their coffers. I mean, it's a big country, there's a big economy, there's a lot of people, so even if you change only if a, a small percentage of that, then this is really, a, well, a, a big improvement uh, towards the growth and stability of the industry. Good. Um, any other questions? If people have any questions, then uh, obviously they can, uh, can ask them. Otherwise, um, uh, I can ask you for next week in the meanwhile. Um, with Joseph being on the show, what would be your question for Joseph uh, for Mosey Wines? 
Ah, my my question for 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 <laughs> for, for <Jim. laughs> um, yeah, that's a that's a that's a that's a nice one. Um, so uh, maybe how, how, uh, tell us a little bit about how you know him, because um, and how you know the brand. Yeah, well, so I'm, I I met actually Joseph and uh, um, uh, with, he moved to South Africa before I moved to South Africa. Uh, so I met him in South Africa already. I worked and he's also from Zimbabwe. Yeah, he's also from Zimbabwe as well. Uh, and I worked with him. Uh, I worked with him at uh, at uh, at Royal Hotel. I worked at Royal Hotel before he came, and then uh, and then after that he came to to Royal Hotel, um, and we actually participated uh, together in the World Blind Testing Championship. Uh, in France, in 2017 and 2018. So you, so you were side by side in the same team. Yeah, yeah, we were side by side in the same uh, uh, in the same team, and uh, uh, he was um, uh, uh, he was actually he was actually the captain of the of the team, um, and uh, I actually introduced the, his wines, Mossy wines, to the Dutch market, um, and uh, yeah, they are being received very well, um, and. Um, uh, uh, we also have I also have the wines uh, on the website as well for uh, Swill and Sink fine wines. Uh, everyone who's uh, was interested in actually knowing about uh, about. Uh, well, there is there is somebody who wants to get your contact details. So um, maybe you want to take down the name, but I think it's easy to after uh, the show to find your uh, name because they can just uh, go and find uh, Pardon yeah. Pardon the Guzu yeah. or. Uh, uh, your company's name, but um, we will sure to match you up. But um, okay, so you guys know each other pretty well, so that must be easy to come up with a question there. <laughs> yeah, well, um, yeah, you know, when you know someone, that's that's when it's actually difficult to come up with a question, you know. <laughs> um, okay. Um... Okay. Do you sell his wines? Maybe you want to tell us something about, uh, you ask him something about this new project that he's doing. I mean, you already know a little bit about that maybe, but we could talk about it in the show maybe, then as well. Yeah, maybe, 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 maybe he can uh, 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 shed some light to us if he has a new project that, uh, that are coming up. Um, and uh, if he's, um, uh, he's also, um, uh, also on the uh, on the verge of also uh, uh, expanding uh, expanding his brand as well because I know I know he is uh, uh, he is uh, his uh, on his brand he has a gin and uh, he has um, uh, a Chenin Blanc uh, and then he also has a Syrah as well. So he already has two different wines and then he has the the gin next to it. Yeah, exactly as well. And uh, I think uh, I think I saw him. He's uh, he's, he's doing. Uh, He's doing something else, which is coming in the in the pipeline. And so you're curious about new projects that he might be uh, undertaking. <laughs> Probably he must uh, tell us uh, what is the new project and um, and where can we where where can we when when can we expect uh, the, the the project? Good. We'll be sure to ask him. Uh, in the meanwhile, no new questions, I think. So um, thank you very much, Pardon, for being in uh, in the show today. And it's been a pleasure talking with you about South Africa and about your journey. So uh, I'm happy that you made some time. Maybe you want to say something to the people watching now or in the recording? Uh, oh, well, uh, I'll say hi, hi to Michael. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just uh, want to say thank you. Thank you guys for, uh, for watching. Um, and... Um, yeah, keep supporting South African uh, South African wines wherever you are. Um, just uh, uh, make it a point to drink some South African wines. Uh, you know, especially the fine wines. I think uh, they are of uh, uh, good quality and uh, they deserve to be uh, at your table uh, any any time. And uh, yeah, and uh, let's keep supporting uh, South African wines and um, yeah, cheers to to everyone. I think it's a strong closing message. Pardon. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers. 
And um, we will take our share because we're going to have uh, another South African guest uh, next week. And next week, we're going to talk to Joseph from Mosey Wines. In the meanwhile, all the fans are uh, dropping in still. So maybe you will have to do a little after party after the show, uh, pardon. Yeah. But um, <laughs> thank you very much, pardon, for being here today. today. And um, for all the people watching, uh, tune in next week and next Friday to hear uh, Joseph's Joseph and his story about Mosey Wines. And yeah. uh, obviously, also, if you guys want to win some glasses, we're Dutch, so you can win some wine glasses. Go to Dutch Wine Brandon's because we're giving away uh, six nice glasses from Gabriel Glass. So thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, Pardon, and uh, see you all next week. Yeah, cheers. Okay, bye-bye.